right now for me it's quite hard to describe. It's uh, it's an extraordinary experience. It's it, it's an extraordinary vehicle. Um, you know, launches from uh, r pretty slow speed and accelerates uh, extremely quickly for for 60 seconds for a minute uh, at v very high G, 3G longitudinal acceleration, and uh, and then it folds itself in half for the re-entry, uh, and then it becomes a glider at the end. So it's it's a remarkable vehicle, and uh, it's an extraordinary experience. The, the it's the first time I've been in space and. Uh, the views are absolutely extraordinary. Um, I couldn't believe how much I could see, how far I could see, and how clear everything was. You know how how dark the the, the sky, the the black sky of space was, and how bright the planet was, and um, and how silent it was up there. It was just uh, an absolutely extraordinary experience. It was uh, very surreal, right? You had a very smooth ride up on the mothership. Uh, taking us very uh, to, perfectly to our drop point uh, and then uh, releasing at, uh, like Dave says, at uh, fairly slow speeds from a spaceship perspective and then quickly accelerating up to, uh, to Mach 3 and, uh, and zooming on up. Uh, and then what I really take away was is how quiet it was at, uh, at Apogee. It was just amazingly quiet uh, with, uh, like Dave said, uh, views to uh, uh, extreme views all, all the way down to, uh, south of uh, Baja California out to uh, and into the north out towards the uh, Bay of San Francisco and well past Nevada to the east it was just gorgeous not a cloud out there bright sky and uh, just uh, I just take away the peacefulness at the apogee was just was just amazing and uh, no words can really describe it so it's planet earth out there and um, it's a, it's a very, very beautiful planet uh, with a very thin atmosphere around it that we all need to take great care of. So, a fantastic experience. I, I don't think there was anything unexpected. Um, I, I guess um, the, the one thing I would mention perhaps is that, um, you know, the, the vehicle, parts, we have some very cold uh, fluids on board the vehicle and, uh, and because of that some uh, ice forms around uh, certain parts of the structure. So. What I didn't expect to see was uh, pieces of ice uh, floating around us uh, in space, and uh, but you know very gently in a very sort of um, in a weightless uh, environment, and uh, I, I hadn't anticipated that, uh, but it was wonderful to see. So one thing, one comment I like to make is that uh, we practice so many simulator runs where we practice contingencies and off nominal situations. And uh, the, my big takeaway today is that uh, for the most part there was no off nominal situations and so it was, uh, we actually had time, more time to, uh, to actually take in the experience because of that. Uh, the, the vehicle has so much performance, there's so much acceleration that uh, it feels, it, it always feels on all the flights uh, that we've done so far, I think it, it always feels like a very, very high performance vehicle. And uh, the additional weight for the commercial cabin um, didn't seem to have any great effect on, uh, on the performance of the vehicle itself. Yeah, and I, I was very fortunate. Dave allowed me to have uh, my shot at the controls, both exo-atmospheric and re-entry, and actually after on the glide as well. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the vehicle behaves uh, much better than it does in the simulator, which is always a good news for pilots uh, trained in a simulator. You want a vehicle that flies better than the sim, and it does that, and there were definitely no surprises. We're really grateful to uh, you know our partnership with NASA for believing in us and, and also putting forward the Flight Opportunities Program, which enables researchers and technologists from around the country really to put uh, their experiments up into space. You know, a lot of them have been waiting for years to go up, and now we can be flying on a very rapid uh, basis. And so we think this is a really exciting thing for science, and obviously it's a great thing for our business as well. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, they are pulling uh, the payloads off the vehicle right now as we speak. And so I think uh, we probably have to wait a little bit longer until we get back the results from them. But that's part of the advantage of our form of rapid reusable space flight is that people can get access to their experiments and their technologies right after we land, pull it right off, and they can be looking at their data within a few minutes after we land. Obviously, we want to fly as soon as possible, but actually we still have um, some work to do on, the, on fitting out and finishing the work on the interior of the vehicle. We made a lot of progress with this flight in terms of the interior fit out, but we have more work to do there. So we'll have to do that. And then as usual, as you know, you know we'll have to uh, look at all the flight data and make sure that we understand everything that we're seeing. That's just the, the very careful engineering process that we've been following since the beginning. So we'll have to go through that. And then once we've done that, 
and uh, we feel ready, we'll, we'll fly again. Well, I, th I think basically at heart, you know, we um, offered a price to our customers um, in the early years because, you know, they were sort of early adopters. But I think what we've realized is that, um, uh, you know, the, probably the, the right price for this, uh, at least in the near term, is, is higher. And um, I think that there are folks who, who would love to fly um, and, uh, and, and, you know, recognize that the only other way to do this right now is with the Russians paying, you know, 50 to 70 million dollars a seat. And so the idea of, you know, you can go to space for some hundreds of thousands of dollars is an incredible value. And it's part of the revolution that's going on in space as we literally make the costs lower by orders of magnitude, you know, hun a hundredfold cheaper than the Russians right now. So that's what we're talking about in terms of the revolution in space. We were so honored uh, when the Department of Transportation, uh, the Secretary Chow and the head of the FAA uh, gave official government uh, wings, astronaut wings, to our uh, December pilots, um, you know, just a few weeks ago. And we're also honored when uh, the administrator of NASA congratulated us on flying to space from American soil for the first time uh, since the retirement of the space shuttle. But look, you know, opening up space is going to take lots of companies and it's going to take lots of innovation. And, and so we think it's great that there are other entities out there who are also going to space. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's a great thing for the industry. We need to fly more people because we think that flying a lot of people into space is going to have a profound impact on planet Earth. So, you know, really, I think, I think it's great that all these folks are going to be flying into space. We were honored to receive our wings. You know, really the, the first wing since 2004 for a commercial space flight. And we're just looking forward to the future. But Beth was a fully paid up member of the crew and uh, she will qualify as an astronaut. And uh, she, she did great work. Um, she was uh, busy the, the whole flight, really, um, uh, taking in the experience, recording her uh, emotions and her, her findings, her feelings, and um, uh, all, all the way up, really, from takeoff uh, all the way down to landing. So uh, she was a very busy lady back there. Uh, she, uh, we allowed her to unstrap uh, very early on, if, just after the uh, rocket motor shut down, she was able to unstrap and uh, she was able to float around and uh, uh, evaluate what the experience is like and evaluate the equipment that we've got in the cabin currently. It's not the fully uh, complete. Uh, uh, customer cabin yet, but uh, there's a lot of equipment in there, and uh, she she was able to evaluate that. Um, so it, it's it's a uh, kind of halfway house right now. There's there's much more equipment to be put in the cabin before, you know, we get to our fully envisaged commercial cabin. Um, but and uh, plus on this flight we had payloads as well, which is not going to be our our normal, uh, you know, experience. Not the normal environment, yes. But uh, she. Uh, I think she's a little bit like us in that uh, she was uh, absolutely enthralled and amazed by the, uh, the sensations, the experience, and uh, totally thrilled. And uh, I think you know we're, we're I think we're all really excited about this product that we have, and convinced that uh, it's going to be a, a great, great success going forward.